I talked with James Fitzgerald about the Unabom case, the TV show based on his search for linguistic fingerprints, and the growing field of forensic linguistics. You know, watching the show Manhunt Unabomber was an eye-opener for lots of us who maybe followed the case back in the day of the Unabomber but didn't know what was happening behind the scenes and the crucial role played by uh, your study and implementation of forensic linguistics. Could you give us a little bit, bit of background about how you got involved with that? I was a brand new profiler in 1995, seven years in New York City as a, as a beat agent, and all of a sudden I go through 12 weeks of profiling training, and lo and behold, San Francisco's uh, Unabomb Task Force calls and said, we want a profiler. And uh, we had the manifesto just came in, maybe he can help with that, but we need a new profile. So I went out there, there's reams of documents to review, including the granddaddy of them all, the manifesto, and I've always been a crossword uh, aficionado, uh, cryptograms. Obviously, I did a lot of reading. And I just said, you know what? There's something here. We haven't solved this case in 17 years using fingerprints, latent uh, writings, uh, you know, hairs and fibers, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something in the writings of this guy. Would you boss his mind if I worked with this for a while? A little bit of hemming and hawing. Eventually, they said, sure, Fitz, go ahead. At the time, this now science of forensic linguistics was sort of more an idea that people were just using. Are you surprised to see where it's gone? I am, and I was, I was glad to be sort of at the vanguard of it. Corpus analysis is really the future of forensic linguistics, and I was one of the first people to design and create a corpus of genre-specific communications while at the FBI. That is, every single threatening communication we had from kidnapping ransom notes to bank robbery notes to people threatening each other, we put them in for the first time in one database, and we could fully search it and move on from there. Fitz, it seems in your book and in the show that you were a bit tortured. Uh, in, in the narrative there, it was both professional and personal, um, including interactions with your bosses and with Ted Kaczynski, ultimately. Um, are those true to life, and where do you stand today? It's about 85% accurate. And really, everything portrayed in the miniseries is accurate to some degree. They just had different people, and in many cases, me, being the one in the middle of the situation. I don't want to disappoint too many people out there, but uh, my FaceTime with Ted Kaczynski in real life was actually minimal. Mm -hmm. It was only in the courtroom in Sacramento on the day he was sentenced. Were there some points there in the 90s when you were searching for Ted Kaczynski, who at that time nobody knew his name, including his own family, that he was involved in this, that you thought, I'm going crazy here? <laughs> um, yeah, people have asked me that. Did the case drive you crazy? Were you obsessed? I don't like either of those words. I, w I like to say now, I said it back then too, I was laser focused. Mm -hmm. And uh, every once in a while nowadays, I'll still get involved in a case uh, or something in my life in which I say, I'm laser focused on this. But of course, it wouldn't stretch out as long as it did in the Unibomb case. And certainly the, the, the demands and the, uh, the, the issues at hand in terms of people getting bombs in the mail and being killed are not that serious.